Um, my name is Martin Fackler. I am the Tokyo Bureau Chief. And the, the title, as we just heard, was Challenges and Opportunities After the Fukushima Nuclear Disaster. Now we're going to look at the other side of the nuclear coin, if you will, which is civilian nuclear use, this crisis management. And, and the question of what do you tell your public? You know, I mean, uh, you know, do, do you tell them that there's a serious nuclear accident or do you play it down? Do you try to cover it up? Um, uh, we heard about bananas and we shouldn't make the comparison, but I think actually I disagree a little bit. But healthy uh, foods aren't 100 percent healthy. Most people will get more radiation exposure from eating bananas. You know, if we look at the radioactivity and the response, these are beta emitters that have similar energies, and so we actually can make some comparisons, but the point Now is it's safe enough to spend a few hours inside. In four hours, I received the equivalent of less than a chest x-ray. There's much smaller amounts of radiation in the ocean that we can measure than are generally considered harmful to us. Tell me what I'm overlooking here. Well, on the face of it, I must agree, it doesn't look good. Okay, that's but, a good response. How about you, uh, uh, Mr. Mad? Uh, currently in Japan, in the water right off the beach at Fukushima, if you stayed in the water for the whole day, you would, you would receive on the order of 10 nanosieverts in the course of the day. Uh, in other words, about 0.3% of the normal daily dose that everyone gets. Mr. Mad, a 500-fold more exposure to radiation from human consumers of bluefin tuna would be coming from the naturally occurring um, radionuclide polonium-210 um, that, that's, that's been in the ocean um, since there's, there's been an ocean, more or less. So he's talking about something that's indigenous to the ocean. You can take a bath in this all day, every day. It can't possibly hurt you. It's plutonium-210. It's insignificant. It has nothing to do with E equals MC square. Mr. Madwood. CCM-137 forecast showed a near-surface radiation cloud over Texas. Because it's very hard to imagine how there could be a five-fold increase in natural background radiation from the sort of material that's coming from Fukushima. Hot particles bombarded the West Coast. It's just too far away. And hot particles found at two out of three U.S. monitoring stations during April. All of these are 2011. But having said that, the levels of natural radon seem to be increasing, and I'm a bit puzzled about that too. Now, as far as the, the Fukushima radiation coming to the United States, th this report from L.A. and from San Diego, uh, talking about five-fold excess, w w I, I followed this up and had a look at the weather patterns for those areas and looked at the RADNET measurements, um, which, were, which are on the internet, and where you can see these levels of gamma radiation plotted. And in fact, they plot very much on the top of, of fog banks. I mean, I, having said all this stuff, I, I know it sounds a bit waffly, but I mean... Well, there are about 12 becquerels of potassium-40 in bananas. We're also closely coordinating with other U.S. federal and state agencies regarding information about current concentrations of radioactive contamination in the Pacific Ocean. Based on the best scientific information available, no agency in the United States or abroad has identified any evidence of concerns for U.S. food and water supply or public health. Authority hid the radioactive plume forecast to avoid evacuation. The mayor says it's akin to murder. 1,300 people filed criminal complaints seeking to jail government officials and TEPCO executives. Comparisons with x-rays and CAT scans are meaningless. Inhaling particles increases the radiation exposure by a factor of a trillion, says the experts. It's because you have it in you and you can't get rid of it. It goes in your muscles, in your hearts, in your bones, sequesters in your organs. Diplomat, Japan's public is beginning to slow burn, becoming very indignant. The government fears for its pension. Japan's Prime Minister, September 8, 2013. Fukushima contamination has never done any damage to Tokyo. New York Times gleeful radiation expert trying to calm the public with radiation. Why we ingest radioactive material every day? Bananas are a potent source of it. A few days later, they tried another expert, and he said, I just had a banana for lunch. Alaska authorities refused to test radiation levels in fish. They says a banana is riskier. And who doesn't love a banana? The body of an adult male weighing 60 kilograms usually contain radioactive potassium-40 of 4,000 becquels, disintegrations, decays per second. No, it's called homeostasis. A 
And what happens is your body regulates potassium-40. If you drink a glass of water at 7,000 becquerels of potassium-40, you off-gas the same amount. It regulates it like a thermostat, like the cruise control on a car. If you ingest CCM, it sequesters into your organs, into your heart. If you drink CCM, you never get rid of it. It's a radioactive material, a particle, an atom. Japan Times. Okay for babies to drink radioactive milk because adults have natural potassium-40. Radioactive milk is not like potassium-40. Radioactive milk they were talking about was probably the iodine originally, but it also has the cesium. There's 30 times more strontium-90. It goes right into your bones. Potassium-40, everything on the planet, everything on the planet has potassium-40. It has nothing to do with the equation. It's ridiculous that this is put out there, and the people that mention it are discredited immediately. PBS, Frontline Miles O'Brien, cheeseburgers and fries are a much bigger risk to our health than cesium, because he's talking about potassium-40. Cesium, the radioactive 134, 137, didn't travel by itself. It had uranium, plutonium. It also had 30 times more strontium. There was incredible amounts of radioactive material, particles, and atoms that flooded the entire planet. And just ingesting one of them is worse than all the radioactive material you have in your body. Shocking radiation propaganda on a local TV news near a troubled California nuke plant. Bananas are sleeping next to someone, and granite is put into the equation. That can't give you cancer. If you ingest a single particle or an atom from Fukushima, your body attacks it and builds a sarcophagus around it, a.k.a. a tumor. It's the only sarcophagus on the planet that can contain it, but it creates a tumor. CBS health officials are investigating radiation levels along the coast near San Francisco. Absolutely no correlation, says the UC Berkeley professor with nuclear disasters. He compares it to eating a banana. This is an educated, unimaginably well-positioned person who should know the minimum about this and instead brings banana into the equation to trick you. So you can't wrap your mind around this. Bananas are potassium-40. You eat it, you off-gas the same amount. If you drink water with potassium-40, it's everywhere. It's in your clothing, it's in your table, it's in the chair you're sitting on. It's everywhere. It's irrelevant. So why do we hear this over and over? But don't worry about the bananas. Pregnant women get free new houses if they move back to Fukushima. Experts say the radiation is all around us, from the rays of the sun to the granite beneath their feet. And this was a UC professor, Charlie Zender. Zender suspected that if a radiation was released, it was less than a chest x-ray. You can't get the same type of radiation from ingesting an isotope as you can from an x-ray. It's irrelevant. It's like the bananas. And bananas are irrelevant. They aren't a good way. They should never be an equation. They're not really radioactive. Everything around you is the exact same kind of radioactive. Those headlines are misleading on both of them. In fact, Zender said sleeping next to someone adds the equivalent to one banana every day. Every friggin' day. Well, by the time you're 50, they're gathered up, right? See, this is an outrageous fabrication. We're talking about, you know, some the guy who interviewing him should say, hey, get back on the subject, please. Bananas have nothing to do with this. Why did you say that? You just discredit yourself. Reactors don't run on bananas. It's just that, I'm sorry, it doesn't work that way. Edward Morris, professor of nuclear engineering. Professor of nuclear engineering at UC Berkeley. One more time, professor of nuclear engineering at UC Berkeley. Nobody is exposed to any dangerous levels of anything. I haven't seen a single record of anything that would be of concern. At the bottom of it, he says, human bodies know what to do with natural occurring radiation. Our body does not absorb them unnecessarily. If you eat a banana, you can't absorb it, okay? You off-gas it, no matter what it is, an apple, a banana, a potato, a drink of water. Cyst. Children's risk of cancer from radiation is 10 to 100 times higher than an adult. Irreversible heart damage for children with 50 Bechtel Tokyo kilogram. newspaper. Six in 10 Fukushima children tested have diabetes. Eight-year-old girl, 3,000 disintegrations of radioactive fission. 70% of the children tested in Kanto 
a region including Tokyo, radioactive cesium in your urine. It's ingested. Nobody's died of radiation at Fukushima. I already hearing reports of kids suffering heart 180, attacks. 180,000 students eating radioactive beef. 1,300 beckles a kilogram served for lunch. Kids exercise on top of 120,000 beckles. Parents accused of being monsters if they're concerned. Adults volunteer Japanese students for decontamination in contaminated Big areas. Big change in the number of child deaths in Fukushima. Cardiovascular, cancers. Leukemia. Child cancer doubles if exposed to just a couple of it. The children are sacrificed. The business is forced the mayors to keep the children there. Don't be a chicken, the mayor tells parents who are concerned their children are eating radioactive lunches. Nobody's died, for goodness sake. Yeah. Um, and, and nobody will. I mean, you can, one of the things I, I, I do imagine is... Old and young dying from heart attacks, women from leukemia. The government's answer? Wear long sleeve shirts Five-year-olds marched off to irradiate a school playgrounds, Geiger counters strapped to their chest. It's hard to imagine. 75% of Fukushima's 300,000 children are going to school so contaminated they would be radiated control areas in nuclear power plants. 75% of Fukushima's 300,000 children going to school so contaminated to be radiated nuclear control areas. Japanese mayor students are gaining knowledge by eating radioactive food in school. Young people in Fukushima who are in a high school have died suddenly. Former mayor, people are always told any disease they have is not caused by Mother radiation. tells official, lick that soil, lick it. Children lick the soil. Please take the soil in your hand and lick it if it doesn't need to be removed. Japan's radioactive children will be fine, says new scientist, the apologist for the nuclear industry. Officials raised the radiation level 75 times higher than the World Health Organization recommends for children. Worse than radioactive rain after Fukushima. Fallout was suspended near the Earth's surface without settling down. This is where children walk and breathe. Closer to Officials the made it mandatory to use Fukushima rice in school 90 lunches. 90% higher increase in childhood leukemia around nuclear power plants. The children are being sacrificed. South of Tokyo, 12,000 beckles a kilogram next to children's swimming pools. There are levels of concern for drinking water in the U.S. It's about 8,000 in those units. They have a regulatory limit of about 90,000. So they're allowed by law to put up to about 90,000 becquerels per cubic meter of cesium in the ocean by the operating license of TEPCO. Our plants have similar things. They're allowed to have certain levels in the ocean. What do you make of activists who say the sea is being polluted by Fukushima? <laughs> <laughs> Come on. That's because these are considered safe. And what we'll talk about at the last part of my talk is, well, what does that mean also for, that might be safe for your exposure, but what about the uptake into fish that we might be eating? So I'll end my talk with the seafood side. DOE sent a letter today to people of Eddy and Lee County saying again that the radiation that got into the air Valentine's Day was likely at very low levels, no more risky than a chest x-ray. Whenever you have a disaster of any kind, there's always issues. You always mitigate the disaster and you move forward. I think it provides business, it provides jobs, um, it provides a future. So there's 12 Beckles of potassium-40 in bananas, and if you eat it, you off-gas 12 beckles of potassium-40 from your body. It regulates it, just like a thermostat regulates temperature in your house. The map you're looking at is around 1,000 to 1,500 miles offshore, and so I need to include that to make sure you understand what you're looking at. But I do want to point out, and I'll go back to, you know, there are about 12 becquerels of potassium-40 in bananas. There are levels of concern for drinking water in the U.S. It's about 8,000 in those units. The reason you're allowed 8,000 becquels of potassium-40 in your drinking water is because it's harmless. It's innocuous. You drink it, you off-gas 8,000 becquels of potassium-40. It doesn't belong in the conversation. They have a regulatory limit of about 90,000. So that's 90,000 of potassium-40, and you would off-gas that. That would be extremely high and unusual, but you would off-gas that if you drank that because potassium-40 uh, doesn't stay in your body and, and accumulate. So they're allowed by law to put up to about 90,000 becquerels per cubic meter of cesium in the ocean. So you're allowed now all of a sudden to put cesium in the ocean, but we were talking about potassium-40. See how we just switched that? So it's not legal because if you had that much cesium in your water or your tap water or something like that, 90,000 becquerels, 
you couldn't uh, turn the tap on, you would just get irradiated immediately because that's insanity, of course, and cesium doesn't travel by itself. It's going to have the uranium, plutonium, and 30 times more strontium. But this is the game he's running, and that's not all. Wait till you get a load of this. By the operating license of TEPCO, our plants have similar things. They're allowed to have certain levels in the ocean. That's because these are considered safe. So he says because it's considered safe. It would be if it was potassium, but what he switched to was cesium, see? They took potassium, used those numbers for cesium, and now he says it's safe to release it. The licensing agreement for all nuclear plants is supposed to put this in a sarcophagus, in a man-made structure, not in a hole in the ground, but in a man-made structure where it sits for a couple of hundred thousand years. Now, he's claiming because it's equal to potassium-40, right, they flipped it. But, but then he says cesium. And that's what makes it so dangerous. That what makes this so scary is they have to lie and manipulate potassium-40 into the conversation to come up with those numbers. That's what makes this so vital that they can't keep doing this. They just, we have to stop that. That's how they're getting away with it. That's how they're destroying the entire planet. And if there was anything safe about it, they wouldn't be using potassium-40 in the equation. They would just say it's harmless. We know it's not. We know they're supposed to lock it up. We know it went through a chain reaction and becomes many, many times more dangerous and lasts for a long time. Certainly not like a half-life. You have to multiply it by 10. So it's not a half-life. It's times 10. And the lies are endless. He even goes as far as to say the ocean is mostly uranium-238. It's not the same stuff that you get from a nuclear reaction. That's how they do this. They name it the same, and then they claim it's the same, but it's not. And what we'll talk about at the last part of my talk is, well, what does that mean also for, that might be safe for your exposure, but what about the uptake into fish that we might be eating? So I'll end my talk with the seafood side. And he says it's safe for your exposure, and then we'll talk about how is it for the fish. So he equated it all with bananas, and then he's going to equate it as harmless also for the fish. That's an outright lie. He shouldn't be at this. He only showed up the minute Fukushima happened. So well, this event happened. I had actually moved out of this field, but when we heard about the accidents, uh, we immediately knew we had to get there. And, and this is just a picture of a ship from the University of Hawaii. We were very fortunate to find very quick funding. This is in uh, June of 2011. He was there at Chernobyl, didn't do nothing for that entire time, then he shows up for Fukushima all of a sudden. If that doesn't raise your suspicion that he's now saying potassium-40 is the equivalent of these isotopes, when it's, that's impossible and it's an outrageous lie, and he knows the difference, but he's going around giving all these lectures and getting all that air time, and that makes it a scary, scary, scary thing that they have to lie like that. And that applies to both things like cesium or potassium-40. 